Dana? Let me know. Thank you so much. Yes. It's working here. says it's sending it. Dana. That, that should do it right there. On, because I'm seeing it send. Before when we were having a problem, we, it, it wasn't sending yet. Are you turned all the way up on your phone? Because it's, I'm not talking to you. Dana. You got it? Keep watching.
I don't think you, I think if you're a social friend, you can write back. Like, like it's another, can a user like send you a message? Like, yo, can you write back? Two, two, two. Oh, you did? Okay. I heard an uh, audience like, oh, what's going on? Two, two, two. two.
Good evening, everyone. If everyone could take their seat, we're going to get started. We'll give everybody a minute. Can have a seat. Or if you want to stand the whole time. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Well, I guess nobody will have water tonight, but it'll probably be okay. Um, Dr. Leary, Dr. Morris Olson, Dr. Martin, Dr. Fleming, uh, honored guests, uh, graduates, family, and friends, welcome to the graduation celebration of the class of 2017. We're so excited to host you tonight here in the beautiful Ryan um, Science Center where uh, these students have spent much of their first year, more than they probably would like to remember. Um, but to have these facilities, we're really fortunate and I think um, certainly has probably added to their experience here. We know it's been a really long process for everyone, a long journey, and we appreciate you letting us borrow your family members, your partners, your spouses, your friends for the last two years. Um, and we, uh, bitter, in a bittersweet way, uh, are happy to give them back. Um, but we kind of will miss them. To get tonight's ceremony underway, I would like to um, ask the provost, Dr. Melissa Morris Olson, to do a welcome for you. Good afternoon. I am so pleased to welcome you to this celebration, our graduation ceremony for the Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies program, class of 2017. And what a wonderful cause for celebration. Here we are in our beautiful Philip H. Ryan Health Science Center, a truly grand setting for learning and also for celebrating this important milestone. Although I imagine by now, you're probably ready to leave the Ryan Center, maybe a little bit, yeah. I want to extend an especially warm welcome to the many guests, which include alumni of the program, clinical preceptors, PA and MD lecturers, teaching award recipients, and most particularly, our keynote speaker, Dr. Ed Tessier, who teaches the pharmacology and therapeutics courses for the program. And Ed, I know firsthand how beloved you are by the students and the faculty and the staff alike. You've played such a critical role in their preparation and we all look forward to hearing from you in just a few minutes. I also want to welcome family and friends of our graduates. I can only imagine the pride that you must be feeling at this moment in their accomplishments. And I hope you got some goosebumps when they came up the aisle and looking at them here on the stage and don't they look good? 
Yes. You may know or you may not know there were only 30 slots for this class and Teresa Riefel and her faculty were highly rigorous in their review and in their selection of the 30 students who were granted a place. By virtue of their selection and completion of this program, I can assure you that your loved ones are already highly accomplished individuals with significant potential in their chosen profession. But we also know that this level of achievement does not happen in a vacuum. For each and every individual seated here on the stage today, I have no doubt that there is a village of support. To the family and the friends of our graduates, thank you. Thank you for your presence here today, for believing in your loved one's dream of becoming a physician assistant, and for being there throughout their educational journey. I also want to recognize and thank our program director, Teresa Riefel, and her incredible faculty. Teresa was one of the founding faculty members for this program. She played a critical role in the development of the curriculum. She is a fierce advocate. I think you've already uh, encountered that for each and every one of you. And we are blessed by her leadership. Our faculty who are listed in the program are highly accomplished individuals in their own right. They are terrific teachers, but perhaps most significantly, these faculty, your faculty, are deeply committed to the task of preparing you to be the very best, the most highly skilled, the most knowledgeable and compassionate class of PAs that ever graduated from any program ever, period. <laughs> They have had very high expectations, and they succeeded. Your faculty will be here long after you graduate, but they will never forget you, and I want you to keep that close in mind and to your heart. They will never forget you. Forget you. They are lifelong mentors for each of you, so don't forget them. I hope you will stay in touch and keep them up to date on all the things that you're going to be doing. Graduates, I would now like to ask you to join me in expressing your appreciation to your supporters, your family, your friends, faculty, and all those who have played a role in your success. And to our graduating class, you are an incredibly accomplished class through your academic achievements, through your involvement on our campus and in the community, and through your resilience and your compassion, you have left your mark. As a class, your entering class GPA was a remarkable 3.5. What that means is when you average all of their GPA is coming in the door, it averaged 3.5. Now to get a 3.5 across all of them means that they are all individually very, very smart. But even more significant is the fact that the average for your prerequisite courses, and, th and those are the really difficult courses, like in the sciences and so forth, was a 3.7. So coming in the class, coming in the door, so we were all very excited when we started tallying up your GPAs on the front end. You came in our doors with a keen sense about calling to this profession based on real world experience. Individually, you had already accumulated from 500 to well over 8,000 hours taking care of, of patients before you even entered the classroom. You've been described by your faculty, staff, and community preceptors as well-respected and respectful of others, as self-motivated, hardworking, as having significant knowledge, impressive clinical skills, as being unusually dedicated and resilient, as being inquisitive and willing to ask great questions, and my personal favorite, as having an enormous heart for people and their medical issues and situations. Wow, you are gonna make great practitioners. Several of you have already been accepted to premier residency programs such as Johns Hopkins and Bay State Medical and many have already been offered PA positions at various clinical sites from New England to the West Coast. So let me leave you with this. As you get ready to take the next step, you have spent the last two years filling your brains and increasing your skills 
preparing for this career that many of you have dreamed about for a very long time. Your faculty have poured themselves into you. It is now your turn to take everything that you've been given and pay it forward. So let me leave you with the words of the great Irish poet William Butler Yeats who wrote, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. A fire has indeed been lit within each and every one of you. May this flame burn bright and for the benefit of others now and always going forward. I look forward to shaking your hand on Saturday two weeks from now, or Sunday. It's Sunday, isn't it? Don't get that mixed up. <laughs> on the stage at the Mass Mutual Center, and when you come across that stage and you shake my hand and you shake President Leary's hand, and you look into our eyes, I hope that you will know how very proud we are of each and every one of you. Congratulations, class of 2017. Thank you, Dr. Morris Olson, for that wonderful welcome. Uh, as Dr. Morris Olson mentioned, um, it does take a village uh, here for the PA program. Uh, we have a pretty incredible team, and I just wanted to take a minute to introduce everyone. Um, there are probably people that you've heard of, sometimes with or without maybe not so nice words in front or behind them, um, but all for a bigger purpose. Um, so first, Dr. Sudeep Alak, our medical director. Dr. Robert Hoffman, Distinguished Professor of Health Science. <laughs> Shannon Witterick, Director of Didactic Education. I don't mean to point anyone out, but Shannon was probably the one they were complaining about. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Uh, Susan Rooney, our Director of Clinical Education. And everybody likes that person because they send them out on rotation, so it's just, it's just what the job is. Uh, Lisa Adams, our Executive Program Manager. And I know that she is somewhere here. Heather Strelzik, who is our Program Coordinator. She's going to be hiding somewhere, but she has to come all the way up here. I don't know where she is. Um, so everything that you see here tonight from the placement of the chairs to the flowers to where the posters are to the beautiful reception we'll have upstairs to everything that we do every day um, is all Heather. And we do joke that we probably shouldn't come to work if she's not here. And you've seen that. <laughs> um, and so we could not do what we do um, without Heather. I don't know where she is, but we have a little something for her. We'll catch up with her later. She's purposely hiding. Um, Dr. Christine Bacon, who I know is in the back, who is Chair of the Science Department. <laughs> Dr. Bacon taught our Integrated Medical Science course. Um, Dr. Ed Tessier, of course, who teaches pharmacology. <laughs> Dr. Eric Churchill, Public Health Seminar and Clinical Medicine. Dawn Gursky, she's over here on the side. She's administrative support for the building. And there isn't really anyone that's here in the facility that doesn't play a role. We have Anne Marie in the cafe, we have Watson and Alex um, who are here from facilities all the time and make the place look spectacular and are always a smiling face. Public safety, we have Rossi here today in the back. This is like the country club for him when he's over here. Um, <laughs> So we just want to thank everybody that is involved that makes um, every day um, a good one for our students and help in any way possible. So again, uh, another round of applause for all those folks. Um, as mentioned also by Dr. Morris Olson, we do have tremendous support in the community with adjuncts. Uh, and they come in and they do uh, lectures, they precept our students, and they help in a variety of ways. So I know there's a lot of them here, and I'm hoping that you'd be willing to stand and be recognized for your uh, co contributions to PA education and our program in particular. <laughs> and 
And lastly, a big thank you to administration who believes in what we do every day and supports us um, in every way that we need to. So we couldn't do it without you, so we, we thank you as well. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Andre Curiel, class of 2017, to introduce tonight's uh, class speaker who was uh, selected by the class of 2017. Good, e good evening, everybody. Uh, so this year I have the honor of presenting our speaker. This individual is somebody who's been with us from the very beginning here at Bay Path. We've listened to countless hours of his audio recordings, and had the pleasure of listening to his passionate lectures about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. I think I can speak on behalf of the class when I say that he's been one of the most influential people during our time here at Baypath. Some memorable advice he's given us includes, a little bit of fear is healthy, but don't let it be paralyzing. And don't ever shoot from the hip when it comes to treating patients. He's helped us realize how lucky we are to have the opportunity to be providers. And because of him, we're all in a position to, su to succeed in our respective careers. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker for 2017, Dr. Ed Tessier. Well, good evening, everyone. I have to say, uh, with a little humility, this is much harder to do without 20, 250 PowerPoint slides <laughs> right behind me. Uh, so bear with me if I, as I work from old school paper. Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'd like to really thank uh, President Leary uh, and Provost and Vice President uh, Morris uh, Olson, uh, Professor Rethel, uh, really all the faculty, the staff, the family, the friends, uh, and really, of course, you guys, <laughs> uh, the graduates. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to share this evening in the celebration with you and to really share your career with you. I'm going to actually turn the podium just a little bit so I can have more of a conversation with you. Um, and we'll go from there, okay? Fake news. Alternate facts. Over the year, we've heard these terms all too often. It's impacted our electoral process. It's even threatened our democracy. It's contributed to heated and disrespectful discussion with our family, our friends, our coworkers, our acquaintances. It's affected our level of trust in our very institutions and those around us. Fake news isn't new. I remember when I was young, with my mom going to the grocery store, the tabloids in the checkout aisle, invasion by aliens, 78-year-old <laughs> mother giving birth to triplets. But those headlines were really outrageous. Nobody believed them. When fake news is plausible, though, that's when it has the potential of being very dangerous and cr creating a culture of mistrust. So my role here tonight is to give you encouraging words, and I've started out with something less than encouraging words. Um, <clears throat> and, but I don't want to use this so much as a political forum, but to really emphasize one of the key issues here is the, uh, that trust and respect are the core and central tenet of our practice. And that really is, in these times, an, a critical issue to keep our mind and our eye on that ball. It's the foundation, trust is the foundation of maintaining civility in our culture. It, we, it's what keeps our institutionals functional. Trust and respect are minimally required for us to be able to listen and to share different points of view. An erosion of that trust has contributed to our red state, blue state America, where we tend to communicate only with those who share our beliefs or our world view. And unfortunately, this is enabled by our electronic devices, by the apps we self-select, by the news outlets we decide to listen to, and the way we've segregated ourselves. In healthcare, effective care is going to be impossible without trust. Erosion of trust affects our relationship with our healthcare peers, and most importantly, our relationship with our patients. 
breaches of trust have been with us in modern care for decades. A few examples listed by the National Institute of Health website on ethics timeline. Here's one. The 1930s, the Tuskegee syphilis study sponsored by the US Department of Health. The study looked at specifically not treating 400 African American men who had syphilis just to watch the outcome of what the progression of syphilis would be like. Selecting not to treat 400 patients. In the 1950s, the state of New York approved experiences, experiments with mentally disabled children at the Willowbrook State School for intent, uh, and in that school they intentionally infected subjects with hepatitis B. Intentionally infected them. Between 1995 and 2003, there have been dozens of studies published in the literature <clears throat> in biomedical journals that provided data on the relationship between the sources of research, research funding and the outcomes of research studies. The financial interests of researchers in the biomedical sciences and the close relationship between academic researchers and the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. In 2010, the British medical journal Lancet retracted a fraudulent paper from two decades earlier, or a decade and a half earlier in 1998, which linked autism to measles vaccine. But unfortunately, the damage was done. That original fraudulent article contributed to an entire generation of being fearful of vaccination. As healthcare providers, we see patients at their most vulnerable. We hear their secrets, their joys, their fears. They trust us to be competent, respectful, to honor their confidentiality, and that we will listen to what they want and fulfill their wishes as best we can. We rely on this bond of trust and this mutual respect to help our patients and society at large achieve improved health outcomes. This erosion of trust contributes to patients not seeking preventative care. The erosion of trust means incomplete oral histories. Gee, I won't tell them about that. And non-adherence to treatment and follow-up. So what can we all do to trust and earn respect of patients? And I'm going to say five things, but I say it as much to myself as I say it to you. Okay? One, recognize our biases. Who do we identify who is other to us? We all have biases, that's human. But it's a critical first step to look inside before we look outward. Get out of your own comfort zone, your microenvironment, your news source, your Facebook or Twitter feeds, your neighborhood, your work site. It's all causing claustrophobic worldview. So find ways outside of that. Many of you do that pretty well. Some of us, like myself, get comfortable in that little comfort zone. Reach out to folks with different belief systems, different cultures, different political views, different ages, different socioeconomic backgrounds. Find common ground. I'm not sure if any of you have watched W. Camus Bell's CNN program called The United Shades of America, but this gentleman puts himself in very unfamiliar terrain with very uncomfortable conversations, but they're quite meaningful, and until we have those kind of dialogues in this country, it's going to be an uphill battle for us to regain the trust we should have with each other. So one is recognizing our biases. Two, listen. Listen to what is said verbally and non-verbally, but even more importantly, listen to what is not said. You've had a lot of training here about listening, getting medical histories, and you've got a good foundation in that. Some of you are more advanced listeners than I could ever hope to be. But in practice, Keep in mind that good listening is going to help us to get to the root of a patient's concerns and that it is a lifelong skill to learn how to listen. For me, it's one of the hardest skills to learn and maintain. The third, after recognizing biases and listening, is to empower the patient. In healthcare, as you look your approach to care, make sure that that plan of care is what your patient needs not what you think your patient needs. Does it address the patient's primary concerns and goals? Have you asked the patient about their preferences? Have you given them all the options that are reasonable? An observation from real estate 
in addition to what we talked about in pharmacodynamics, location, 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 is also that a homeowner typically has more investment in their property than a renter. This is the owner's own body. Help them to really engage in that. So what I'd encourage you to do, keep the short-term goals realistic and give them homework. They love homework. Patients love homework. You didn't hear that from me, but they love homework. <laughs> Four, pay attention to what you say and how you say it. Be authentic, be transparent, no half-truths, no omissions, no false hope. It'll be easy to give false hope, but patients don't want that. But also how you say it is as important as what you say, respectfully, empathetically, emotional sensitivity, they all go a long way. Even if you yourself don't feel respected by the patient, do your best to muscle up the strength and keep the bar high. Avoid pushing buttons for patients early on. Now, there are some healthcare issues, you're gonna have to push their buttons. You have to do that, that's a responsible thing to do. But when that happens, that should happen when your conversation, your relationship deepens, and when you approach those landmines, do it gently, and be clear that by the end of the conversation, that wound should have some constructive closure. That conversation should have some constructive closure before you leave. So don't open the wound for them that you can't close in the visit time you've got with them. Finally, follow up. Reach out and make sure uh, of a good follow-up plan. Check in with them after the appointment to see how their progress goes. Those, that kind of detail is associated with such higher levels of success. Even if your practice is urgent care, you're in and out, you see the patient shortly, then make sure their handover is good. Make sure they have a clear next step, who they're going to see, where they're going to see it. These five truths, if you want to call them, recognizing our biases, listening, empowering others, choosing our words carefully, and following up are really nothing more than common sense. But they go a long way in these difficult, divided times for us to stay above the fray. In this program, we've stressed both the science required for excellence in practice and also the softer side of medicine. Early in my career, I paid a lot of attention to the science side of things. I thought the rest of it didn't really matter. As I age, I recognize how absolutely critical that softer side of medicine is to achieve patients' uh, improvement in their health outcomes. So in closing, I have to tell you how very proud and honored I am to be here and we are so proud of your success. We're grateful for coming to know you and learning probably as much from you as you've learned from us. And that's hard for you to believe, but I learn a lot from you and I learn about myself through you as well. We're also grateful that your family and friends who all picked up the slack at home when we kept your noses to the grindstone. So they did almost as much work as you did because they picked up the slack while we made you on that treadmill. We look forward to bringing your, you bringing your genuine true selves to your patients, earning their trust and respect by how we recognize our own biases, how we listen with respect, how we empower our patients, and ultimately how we follow up. And while it's often quoted, it's worth repeating here uh, the American poet Maya Angelou, the, the, that famous quote that she had, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did, but they will remember how you made them feel. Thank you very much. Oh, should I try to put this back? I might break something. Thank you so much, Dr. Tessier. We really appreciate it. I would now like to ask um, Dr. Hoffman to the stage for us to present uh, the t class of 2017. Once again, I would like to give my congratulations to the class of 2017. Will you arise as I call your name? Raul Alicia.
Alexander Ash. Mark Bombardier. Ashley Bowers. Tyler Branco. Jamie Broussard. John Bryson. Brian Clark. Andre Curiel. Rachel Defarius. Ruki Desai. Nicholas Felton. Jacob Freeman. John Horak. Dylan Jones. Kimberly London. Nicole Magazzini. Matthew, whoops, Matthew Merritt. Tamara Muse. Amanda Meyer. <laughs> Tiffany Wynn. Niaga. <laughs> Judith Phillips. Jordan Pike. <laughs> Alexandra Pollock.
Kaylee Russell. Brittany Villarreal. <laughs> Amanda Wilson. Congratulations to the class of 2017. I don't know how I got picked to follow that because obviously that's why we're all here tonight. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Susan Rooney. I'm one of the assistant professors and the director of clinical education in the Bay Path University PA program. Each year our program honors selected didactic and clinical faculty with a clinical faculty appointment. This appointment recognizes their commitment to physician assistant education. Each honoree must meet or exceed defined criteria for faculty appointment in one or more of the following areas. Classroom contact hours, clinical precepting, small group facilitation, recruiting and admission, curriculum development, and or student remediation. This year's academic appointments are included as an insert in tonight's program. I know many of our clinical professors are here today. As a program, we are incredibly appreciative and thankful to all of you. You each have had a lasting impact on the education of these graduates that are here tonight. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize these dedicated providers who consistently contribute to the success of the Bay Path University PA program, and I invite all of those here tonight to please stand. Oh, there's more than Kate. There's more than you. <laughs> Just Kate. <laughs> although, although many didn't want to stand, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jamie Broussard, and I'm no longer a PA student. Thank you all for coming this evening. Our class was fortunate to have Dr. Alex Harris, an emergency room physician from Bay State Medical Center, teach a diverse group of topics based on emergency medicine. She complemented this by stories of her experience and anecdotes from the ER, which are entertaining and scary at the same time. <laughs> she brought energy, enthusiasm, a deep knowledge, and an exceptional ability to simplify the complicated topics in order for us to build on our medical knowledge foundation. We unanimously decided that she is awesome. <laughs> and Dr. Harris, thank you for enriching our education and making our learning experience more enjoyable. Please come on up for an award.
everyone. My name is Amanda Meyer, also no longer a physician assistant student. Um, so I have the pleasure of presenting an award to Matthew Keel tonight. We first met Matt last year when he came and presented topics in neurology and neurosurgery. At that point, he was about six months into his career. Um, he had also graduated from Bay Path University. He radiated, radiated with passion, confidence, and excitement for what he did. He was willing to bring complex topics down to a level that we could understand. He took time after class to stay and answer questions and made sure we knew not only what we needed to pass the exam, but to be good clinicians. I also had the opportunity to do a clinic rotation with Matt. During that time, he made sure I was up to date on the latest neurosurgical topics, took time to review the basics with me and some of my fellow students, and gave me the tools I needed to di dissect complex imaging that at first looked like a puzzle I would never be able to solve. I came, up, came out of that rotation with confidence and excitement to begin a career as a PA and was reminded why I started this journey in the first place. Matt, thank you for being an excellent teacher. Congratulations. My name is Eric Nyega. I'm a physician assistant, uh, not student now, maybe. I think I'm uh, not satisfied yet, but satisfied uh, physician uh, assistant student here. And uh, I have the pleasure to introduce to you uh, one of our studying preceptors, uh, Dr. Robert Wu. Uh, Dr. Wu is a specialist in obstetric and gynecology. And uh, he has offered uh, most of our PA students uh, an opportunity to really learn uh, obstetric and gynecology in the clinical setting of his office and areas where hospitals where he is affiliated to. Uh, as you have heard already, most of the preceptors uh, have uh, the ability to simplify co uh, very complex matters so that uh, us as students can understand. Dr. Ull was especially very uh, uh, creating imagery to, for us to understand the concept. There is one particular one where he liked to use called the candle, the, the, sad, the sad castle theory, uh, which uh, he used to explain uh, uterine bleeding. Well, it was not all about uh, the uterine bleeding, but he also did a very nice job in uh, actually introducing us to the clinical setting of things we are scared about. One of the things that uh, we were very scared is actually conducting deliveries and receiving babies. So one time he said, okay, let's go to the hospital and he come in there, he said, put your knee gloves. So I was telling, what does it mean? He said, yeah, put on your gloves, you're receiving the baby. And I was scared so much, I said, okay, hakuna matata. So I <laughs> said, so, 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 so uh, which basically meant uh, there are no problems, but I was really scared. And uh, anyway, many of uh, my colleagues have also said the same thing that uh, he was so good and his simplicity also in life. If you looked at him, you would not think that he's a gynecologist because he was very simple in life and he invited us even to eat lunch with him. Thank you very much. <laughs> as, as students, we always like uh, if somebody could offer us a lunch. Not that we are really begging for it, but uh, if it's introduction, we really liked it. Uh, so I would uh, want to say that uh, he made uh, the, our experience very memorable, and uh, we would really want to thank him. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Robert Wu.
everyone. My name is Nicole Megazzini. I'm also a member of this class that I guess we're physician assistant Dunn students. <laughs> I have the pleasure of giving this next award. The next teaching award <coughs> recipient for the class of 2017 physician assistant program graduates, which we selected, that's why it's titled after us. We selected these people is one of the most memorable instructors I personally have ever had the pleasure of learning from. Whenever my classmates and I saw his name on our Google Calendar to know that that's who we were going to be learning from that day, there was this collective sigh of relief, <laughs> knowing we would soon understand whatever complicated topic had been boggling our mind and raising our stress level that week. He was chosen for this award not only for what he taught us, but primarily for the way in which he taught it. He's an expert in his field, but extremely knowledgeable in all areas of medicine. This man can take the renin angiotensin aldosterone system <laughs> and make it as simple as riding a bike. And for those of you wondering what the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is, I promise you it's just as complicated as it sounds. And if you want to know <laughs> a little bit more, I suggest you ask Dr. Frieda to explain it. Dr. Ben Frieda attended the University of New England's College of Osteopathic Medicine, completed his residency and fellowship at the Cleveland Clinic in Internal Medicine, specializing in nephrology, and is now adjunct faculty, as well as an internist at Bay State Wing Memorial Hospital. Dr. Frieda, the Bay Path University Physician Assistant Class of 2017, would like to thank you for your unwavering support, clarity, and perhaps most importantly, the time invested in our training and education. You truly are one of the great minds of medicine, and we feel very lucky to have op had the opportunity to learn from you. Dr. Fee, will you come up here? everybody. My name is Tamara Muse, and I'm also uh, part of the graduating PA class of 2017. Um, on behalf of our class, I will be presenting Holyoke Medical Center's General Surgery Teaching Award. A handful of us were given the opportunity to spend some time during our general surgery rotation with the Holyoke Medical Center General Surgery team, which was not only an educational experience, but it was an experience that gave us a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and hands-on time during our surgeries. Surgery rotations often have the stigma of long hours, cons constant disease pimping, and hopefully we impress our preceptor enough to see more than just a colonoscopy. However, while at Holyoke Medical Center, they didn't work us to the grave with the 18-hour shifts and overnights. Dr. Martinez did still find the time to get us in on colonoscopies and pimp us on our diseases, which helped kept us on our toes. And as much of a struggle it was to perfect diverticulitis, I'll never overlook a patient with left lower quadrant pain or confuse the difference between a true or false diverticula. Dr. Mizuko was thought to be the dad of the bunch. He was always very patient with us during our cases and took the extra time to go over the cases at the end, making sure we had a full understanding. And Adrian, who was the general surgical PA, she did a great job utilizing our downtime to practice different suturing techniques and providing us with the tools for future success in the OR. Not only was it very helpful working with someone who was in our shoes not too long ago, but it helped make our overall experience with Holyoke Medical Center beyond exceptional. Is there anybody who here from Holyoke Medical Center to accept this award? <laughs> Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Judith Phillips. I'm a physician assistant graduate with my fellow graduates here. Um, I have the honor to present a teaching award to a clinician that um, 
in my fellow students' words, he's a very talented, phenomenal teacher and clinician. As a matter of fact, one of the students said, I would love to have him for a healthcare provider. In the words of another student, is that this clinician is incredibly inspiring. He's very knowledgeable and very compassionate. And uh, more words, which will end the words, because if I'm to speak for the entire class, we might not uh, go to reception. Um, he's professional, compassionate, and will give you honest guidance. So with that, I say, teaching is the act of sharing. The knowledge that we have been given by our teachers has been given with the expectation that we are, gonna share, we are going to share it with someone or others somehow or somewhere. So in my own words, if I can be a provider just as this provider is, I think I'll make a great PA. So ladies and gentlemen, our clinician teaching award goes to our physician assistant, Brian Bourgeois. ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shannon Witterick, and it's my honor as Director of Didactic Education to present this year's Faculty Leadership Award. The Faculty Leadership Award was inaugurated in 2014 during the graduation celebration of our first class. Over the course of their time in the program, the recipient of this award must have demonstrated advocacy on behalf of their fellow students, a strong sense of ethical integrity, professional growth, and dedication to the advancement of and leadership in the physician assistant field. It's been said of this year's winner that she has persevered in the face of challenge with grace and grit through maintaining an open mind and with an eye toward greater outcomes, she has served as a bridge between faculty and students. As a former athletic trainer for the USA Hockey Women's National Team and medical volunteer for the USA Special Olympics, she entered the program with great potential. During her training at Bay Path University, she displayed an ever-broadening capacity to inspire those around her, the mark of a true leader. I understand that upon graduation, she will be accepting a position with the neurosurgical team at Bay State Medical Center our brains are truly in great hands. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge this year's Faculty Leadership Award recipient, Ms. Amanda Meyer. Good evening. My name is Lisa Adams and I'm the Executive Program Manager here for the Physician Assistant Program. It is my pleasure this evening to present this year's inductees into the Pi Alpha, the, Alpha, the National Honor Society for Physician Assistants. Pi Alpha is the National Physician Assistant Honor Society organized for the promotion and recognition of both PA students and graduates. Membership signifies the inductee's significant academic achievement and honors them for their leadership, research, community, and professional service and other related activities. The society also encourages a high standard of character and conduct among students and graduates. 
non-PAs who have rendered distinguished scholarship as well as leadership or professional service to the PA profession who are not eligible for election through other means may be considered for honorary status. When I call your name, please come forward to the stage for the presentation. Our first inductee is Dolly Asha Arjun, MSPAC. Our next inductee is Karen Hogan, MSPAC. Our next inductee is Andre Curiel. And our final inductee is Dr. Robert Hoffman, Distinguished Professor of Health Sciences. My name is Kim London, class of 2017. I'd like to take a special moment to recognize our president, Ms. Amanda Meyer. Amanda has emerged herself into the role of our fearless leader for the past two years, between keeping us updated with information to organizing events like today. We truly appreciate you. We were always able to approach you with issues, and we were able to count on you for those inspirational encouragement of calling us rock stars, and also providing us the countdown to this very day. So on behalf of the class of 2017, we'd like to thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Bowers, and we have one final message from the class of 2017 before closing remarks. Almost two years ago, we were brand new PA students sitting just down the hall from here before Dr. Leary, who graciously welcomed us to Bay Path University. She told us the story of a physician well known to this community who had come to Bay Path to present the idea of establishing a physician assistant program understanding the value of PAs to our community and the outlook for this growing profession. The pioneer of this program, Dr. Robert Hoffman, sits among us in the room today. Little did we know at that time that his impact on our PA education would not stop there. Over the last two years, he has been a constant source of support and infinite wisdom. Not only did Dr. Hoffman bestow upon us his wealth of knowledge and expertise on infectious diseases, but was continuously an invaluable resource for us as students and will continue to be so as we begin our future career as PAs. As the graduating class of 2017, we feel his legacy deserves the type of recognition that becomes a tradition, one that will be shared between past and future classes as a continuous reminder of the person responsible for bringing us all together and providing us with the skills required to become successful healthcare providers. The Dr. Robert Hoffman Physician Assistant Award was established in May 2017 by the Bay Path University PA Class of 2017 to honor the remarkable physician, professor, and role model, Dr. Robert Hoffman. The award will be presented each year at the annual PA graduation celebration ceremony 
to a first year PA student about to begin their clinical clerkships, who has demonstrated high academic achievement, substantial teamwork, as well as personal growth thus far in his or her medical training, and an enthusiasm for continuous lifelong learning. The recipient of this year's scholarship award has been described by the faculty and fellow classmates as gracious, committed, and professional, a great representation of the program, a strong academic performer, and as someone who embraces each new challenge with optimism, enthusiasm, and confidence. On behalf of the class of 2017, we would like to congratulate and call up the recipient of this year's award, class of 2018 physician assistant student, Danielle Capisi. done. Again, my name is Amanda Meyer, I'm president of the class of 2017. To start, to our family members, friends, significant others, thank you. Our success as students is not ours alone. When PA school felt daunting and overwhelming and at times impossible, we remind ourselves of the countless people who believe in us more than we believe in ourselves. And we share this achievement with all of you. We have had incredible people to lead us and prepare us on this next journey. Thank you to faculty, staff, preceptors, adjunct professors for all the time and care you have put into our two years here. Each of you has played an important role. You have fed us, caffeinated us, cleaned up after us, shared a smile or hug when you saw we needed it, lent an ear to listen, and taught us the nuances of medicine that built the foundation of our education that led us here today. Something I believe that is unique about this program is that when we were brought in on, on interview day, in, an emphasis was placed on the value of the PA family. I believe that sets Bay Path apart and is an ideal that our class has embraced. We have experienced joy, grief, success, frustration, and disappointment. We have shared study guides, laughs, and tears. We have supported each other through setbacks and celebrated in success. These last two years have flown by and have been a roller coaster of ups, downs, and unexpected twists and turns. But I cannot imagine sharing this experience with a better group of individuals. I'm so proud and humbled to stand beside a group of such incredible people and almost PAs. To the class of 2017, remember the hard work that we've put in. The sleepless nights, long study days in the glass rooms, weekends spent here when life continued to go on around us. Remember where we started and how far we've come. When just two short years ago, we never knew the boondoggles of medicine, what a grand scene was, and let alone when we should order it, <laughs> which is always. <laughs> As we move into this next phase of our lives and careers, I hope that humility stays with all of us, that we remember to treat the patient, not the disease, and that we always remember the Bay Path family we started with. We should be proud of who we are and what we have accomplished, individually and as a together as a class of 2017. Congratulations. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you to all of you for um, what a incredible tribute to uh, Dr. Hoffman. So we thank you for that. Um, on our behalf as well. Um, before I ask Dr. Leary here, uh, the last couple years they've given me a microphone, so I'm just going to use it. I'm going to try not to get on any tangents because I know that that's my normal thing. But I wanted to say a few words about this class in particular. Um, in March of 2015, I wrote them a letter, and the letter said really inspiring things like, hey, we don't have any faculty right now, and I'm the new program director, we have this accreditation thing coming up, but it'll probably be all 
it'll probably all work out, so why don't you still come? It's probably how you read it. It's not, I wrote it way nicer than that, but that's probably how it came across to them. But they came. They came. They all came. And they didn't see much of us that summer as we prepared for accreditation, and they withstood new faculty and new ideas and being the guinea pigs for things, some things that worked, some things that didn't. Um, and they stayed. They withstood um, stressful times, times when I knew I wasn't at my best, stressful days that turned into stressful weeks and stressful months. Shannon's getting emotional right now, so <laughs> I'm going to get a little emotional. Um, but they stayed resilient in the face of change and challenge. And I thank them for their support and understanding. It's their fault. Uh, and flexibility as things unfolded. And I know that you can't see it all when you're in it, but hopefully you'll see it as you continue on to your career and you will all be amazing. And I know all the things that you learned here. I actually didn't know Shannon was this emotional. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you will transition into the real world very well. And I think that um, you know we all started really this journey together. So this is really meaningful uh, for me to see you all go. So thank you for that. And now to uh, end our evening um, is Dr. Carol Leary, president of Bay Path University. Wasn't that authentic and kind and genuine and heartfelt? She made me cry too. So let me start with gratitude. Gratitude to Teresa. You have been a remarkable leader. You've shared and told us the circumstances upon which you started. And look where we are today, because this is your legacy, the students before you. So with gratitude to you, to every member of the faculty, to the preceptors, the clinicians, the adjunct members of our faculty, to Dr. Liz Fleming, who is our associate provost and works so closely with our PA program, and to Dr. Melissa Morris Olson, our provost, I extend my gratitude. But I know I speak on behalf of all of you in this audience, so will you help me Will you help me thank those who have educated our students? Thank you very, very much. And, and graduations and ceremonies like this should be emotional, and we should have a few tears. Um, my gratitude also to the staff. Uh, when I look at Heather, who wouldn't even come up and get these beautiful flowers. Is she in the room yet? Is she, is she here yet? No. Uh, and to Dawn, and to Lisa, and to all of the staff who support our faculty and our students, we are very, very appreciative to you as well. So know that tonight truly is a night of gratitude. And Dr. Tessier, may I call you Ed? I do call you Ed whenever I see you. I have to tell you, your remarks were incredible. In fact, so much of what I wanted to say, you have already said, and I won't be as eloquent as you, but I hope by repeating it, we will be reinforced with the wonderful message that you gave to our students and to all of us this evening. My thanks to you. And to our award winners, and to Amanda, our class president, and most important to Dr. Robert Hoffman, um, you represent the best. You represent the best. You're the teachers and, and faculty that were, and clinicians and preceptors who were recognized today, we thank you very, very much. And Amanda, you have led your class well, and they obviously definitely supported you. But as was said, Dr. Hoffman has a special place in all of our hearts because it was his idea to receive a letter from someone in the mail. You don't know the individual, 
and he says, could I come in and talk? And I have some ideas, and I'd like to do some teaching. And in that conversation, he mentioned doing the physician assistant program. I'm not sure he ever actually realized that we would do it because that is a very big endeavor with the accreditation that Teresa talked to you about. It takes years to be accredited for a program like this. It takes resources, but it, most of all, it takes passion. And then the evolution to this building, because where our students started on the main campus of Bay Path University to where they are today is a major change. So Dr. Hoffman, I am so happy that you were recognized today, that you will continue to be recognized for all future classes. But I hope you realize that that one small idea has been magnified into a beautiful, beautiful profession. And we're thrilled to be offering the physician assistant program at Bay Path University. Thank you, Dr. Hoffman. And in this room are many donors who have given to this building, and I say thank you because without your contributions, we wouldn't have this magnificent facility in which to have our students study. Now, I'm the only thing between you and that wonderful reception. So I'll try to be brief, but I'll try to, to share with you what I think about today when I think about all of the students on this stage. Our students came to us shaped by many of you in this audience, families and friends and spouses and children and significant others. You shaped the students that are on this stage. We had the great benefit of adding another layer onto who they are. And that was our privilege to have them as students. They learned from our faculty that added to their complexity. They interacted with their peers who were as much faculty and teachers to them in this journey. They added to the complexity of these students' lives. And now it will be patience, the patience that you serve, who will add to another layer and another complexity to your life. And that's where I'd like to Final, finally give you my remarks for this evening. I think you said it, Ed, when you said, you have to remember that the person in front of you is somebody who is really depending on you, and you must listen. You learned that in this program. Because by listening, you may be the one person in that person's life that could change that life save that life by just listening to that patient. So we know you have learned compassion, you have learned care, and you have learned great listening skills at Bay Path University. We hope that you will take what you have learned, we hope you will take all of that emotional intelligence that you have and not only help your patients but help make our world a better world because we need you, I need you, and we are so very proud that you will be leaving as a Bay Path graduate. So congratulations to you. Enjoy the next few weeks. We'll look forward to seeing you at commencement, and I know you will make a difference in our world. Thank you very much, class of 2017. And now our graduates will march out and we will join them upstairs.